Mums and boys face different fears after wave of sexual misconduct scandals. And this is from the New York Post from January the 10th this year. And it's accredited to the Associated Press. Of the many American women dismayed by the wave of sexual misconduct scandals, there's a subgroup with distinctive hopes and fears. Mothers of boys. So not, not fathers then, just the mothers then. And I'll repeat that again. Of the many American women dismayed by the wave of sexual misconduct st scandals, no alleged sexual misconduct scandals. And for that, you can read, as far as I'm concerned, absolute hysteria being created by Hollywood and the mainstream media feminist organizations. And it's it, hysteria is just what it is. Anyway, the article continues. Among them are women who have sought to raise their sons, sometimes from infancy, to shun sexist mindsets and be respectful of girls. I wonder, are these, are these mothers teaching their girls to respect boys and to respect men? Or are, are they just bringing their, their, their sons and their daughters up to believe that, that round every corner there's a male rapist or a paedophile or some nasty groping person? Anyway, it continues, yet even some of these mothers worry about countervailing peer pressure their sons might face. Well, uh, yes, there should, be, uh, there should be something to counteract this, this uh, media hysteria, and let's hope their sons find Migta sooner the better. And there's uncertainty as to whether their son's generation, as adult men, will be less likely to perpetrate or condone sexual misconduct. Who's condoning sexual misconduct? The overwhelming majority of men would never dream of perpetrating or condoning sexual misconduct. Danielle, I can't pronounce her surname, Danielle, a New York-based writer and editor, has been wrestling with these questions, even though her son, Matthias, is only three, three years old. She says she feels extra pressure because she was sexually assaulted five years ago by a co-worker. Well, that's, uh, that's a terrible thing, and I feel sorry for her, but why, why is she fretting about her son? He's a three-year-old boy. He had nothing to do with it whatsoever. This is terrible. I wonder what kind of man I'm raising. He isn't a man. He's a little boy. And how he'll treat women and girls in his life, said, what was her name, Danielle, 30, who already takes Matthias to events where sexual misconduct is discussed. Well, I, I don't care how well-meaning this woman is. Uh, she sounds to me like the hysteria created by the media has made her a little bit paranoid. And I think about calling in the social services, to be honest. And, uh, you know, she needs to have a chat with someone there who's more on the know. Anyway, she continues. Uh, she's quoted as saying, does he understand? No, she said. Well, of course he doesn't. He's a little three-year-old boy. I can't even remember being three years old. And she's, she's what, talking to him about about sexual harassment. No, it's disgraceful. But she says it won't be a topic, uh, a taboo topic later on. I hope he'll have the courage to stand up for what's right. Yeah, I hope he stands up against his own mother and I hope he stands up for his own rights not to be, you know, I mean, she's not demonizing him, but she's, it's as if she thinks he's gonna turn out to be some kind of demon because he's male, as if this is some in some way is part of natural male sexuality, which is, absolute rubbish. Men are programmed instinctively for millions of years to be the protectors of women and their providers. But feminists, of course, have shoved men to the side, courtesy of the mainstream media. They've given women the impression that, uh, that they need protecting from men, their real protectors, by feminists. And feminists will, of course, provide for them also by taking money out of men's pockets, whether it's transferring it through the divorce system or stealing from men's pockets in the workplace and shoving it into women's pockets and calling it equal pay for less than equal work. Anyway, I'm never going to get through this bloody thing, so I'll just do a bit more of it. In a recent article for the website Romper, uh, this woman wrote that the scandals provide a teachable moment for her and Matthias. He's three, just let him live, just let him leave the kid alone. It is my responsibility to provide him with concrete examples of what to do and what not to do when he witnesses, hears about, or is a victim of sexual assault, she wrote. You see, she sees it everywhere, and that's because this is the impression the media give. 
Nina Chaudhry, Education Director for the National Women's Law Centre. Uh, that, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is a completely feminist organisation. Has taken her son, now 10, to pro and college women's basketball games in Greater Washington. That's where the NWLC are based. I was going to do a video on them before. Anyway, uh, she's been taking him uh, to these things since babyhood. Chaudhry says he's now a devoted fan who extols the virtues of women's sports to other boys. Yeah, all right, fair enough. It helps him see women as strong and formidable, Chaudhry wrote for the Law Center's blog. Strong and formidable. Uh, is she bringing him up to believe that boys should also be strong and formidable? I don't know. I can't make any ac accusations against her. A Denver mum, Cynthia Bourne, said she and her husband set out early in parenthood to raise their two sons to resist sexist attitudes. With all the sexual harassment news, we've had a lot of family discussions and thank goodness our, parent, our, our parenting style was validated. Boom, wrote by email. My boys were disgusted by the attitude of predatory men. Well, this sexual harassment news she talks of, you see, she believes every single word of the media. Does she have any interest in, interest in false accusations against men? Does she have any concern that her boys, if they go to college, may be falsely accused by females? And is it, what is it, Title IX or something, which removes their, their right to due process? It's absolutely disgusting what these, these people are doing. Uh, I don't, I, like I say, I don't care how well-meaning they are. My, my boy, I'll repeat it again. My boys were disgusted by the attitudes of predatory men. Yet the real predators are the women in Hollywood and the mainstream media and feminism and in politics. Feminists, they're the predators. They're liars to a woman. She recalled an incident when her oldest son, now 18, was a high school freshman and walked away when some soccer teammates laughed about a cell phone video showing a drunken girl kissing numerous boys. Well, what's the problem with that? I hope now that he is older, he feels secure enough to not just walk away, but to call them out on it. This is where the real work is. What is she talking about? Look, if a drunken girl is kissing loads of boys, then what's her fucking problem? Is she being raped? No, she's not. So fucking leave it, woman. Long before the latest scandals, no alleged scandals, programmes emerged aimed at reducing boy-girl gender friction and curtailing sexual harassment. Among them is Coaching Boys Into Men. I've heard of this one before years ago. Developed by the non-profit Future, Futures Without Violence. Thousands of high school and middle school coaches have been trained to convey to their players the importance of treating young women with respect and avoiding abusive behavior. And do we have an opposite of this? Coaching girls into women? Teaching them not to be a bunch of false allegation making lying fucking man-hating bitches no there is not right i'm skipping down quite a way here partly because i'll never get through the thing otherwise uh, and partly because it's making me sick but i'll i'll pin a uh, a link to the thing in the comments section i'll pin it to the top anyway i've got down to the part where it says author warren farrell whose books about gender issues include the myth of male power and the boy crisis says efforts to curtail sexual harassment would benefit from more understanding of the insecurities experienced by many boys. Farrell is, Farrell's been on the Oprah Winfrey show in the past. I'm going to do a video about it here, actually. And uh, Farrell, you, you, oh God, one of his main fame, uh, claims to fame is that back in the 70s, he met John Lennon and, uh, and John Lennon told him how brilliant he was, something like that. And uh, also, it's also interesting to point out that Farrell, who used to work for a national women's organisation in the United States, when he started uh, not so much being anti-feminist as actually standing up for boys and standing up for men, he and his wife were receiving death threats at two o'clock in the fucking morning after they, they found out where they lived. Anyway, among Farrell's suggestions, more dialogue between the genders and a greater balance in sharing responsibility for initiating sexual interest. No, Warren, you can't, you can't take millions of years of evolution, stand it on its fucking head, and expect anything other than what we have now, a sociological disaster, a catastrophe. Amy Lang, a Seattle-based sex education expert, says who, 
talks about sexual harassment issues with his 17-year-old son, including how he should respond to friends' sexist comments. You can say, dude, that's not okay, she said, but it's super hard to go against the tide. Look, you're living in the United States of America. There is no fucking, there is no epidemic of sexual harassment going on. It's in your minds. It's been put into your minds by the mainstream media. You are not living in the fucking Congo. She has learned how harassment can evolve out of now commonplace sexting. Boys sending explicit photos to girls, girls often reciprocating to the later regret. So, as usual, the girls are the victims and the boys are the aggressors. Uh, I'm going to wrap up pretty quickly now. Many parents, she said, have their heads in the sand. No, maybe they don't have them up their fucking asses. Lang said. It doesn't occur to them to tell their sons it's not okay. Maybe, because unlike you, it doesn't occur to them that their son may be some kind of pervert and along with his friends. Anyway, I'm done with this fucking article. Thank you very much if you've got this far.